cheerful givers. We got to be cheerful givers. Give to God what he has already given unto us. So this morning, even online, I greet you this morning. Now it's time for tithes and offering. You could pay your tithes and offering through Cash App, Zelle, or PayPal. The number is 860-634-8557. You could pay your tithes and offering through Cash App, Zelle, or PayPal. The number is 860-634-8557. And if God has placed on your heart to sow a seed, you can also do that through Zelle, PayPal, or Cash App at 860-634-8557. Can you sing a song? The windows of heaven are open and the blessings are falling today. Joy, joy, joy in my heart Since Jesus made everything right I gave him my own tattered garment He gave me a robe of pure white I'm feasting on heavenly manna that's why I'm so happy today. Oh, the windows of heaven are open and the blessings are falling today. Joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my own tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white I'm feasting on heavenly manna That's why I'm so happy today ah, The windows of heaven are open And the blessings are falling today Joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right I gave him my own tattered garment He gave me a robe of pure white I'm feasting on heavenly manna That's why we're so happy today Amen, Thank you, we are happy today Can we be on our feet? Everyone that's online, I pray that you holding up your offering to your heavenly father and just thanking him for his provision. Amen. God, we come to you this morning just thanking you, God, that you're the only one that could provide. You're the only one that can open doors. You're the only one that can close doors. But Father God, we pray this morning for this tithes and offering that your servants have given back onto you, God. God, I pray that each and every one that placed their money in this basket right here, God, I pray that they gave it with a willing heart so that you can open up the floodgates of heaven and pour down your blessings on them, God. Father God, and for the ones that are waiting for you for a job or waiting for their situation to change, I pray that they be encouraged this morning because, God, you said you will be there for the helpless you will be there to allow us to see that there is more that are with us than against us. And Father God, we know that your angel encamp around about us because you are our Father, our Heavenly Father and our Earthly Father. God, we place this tithes and offering in your hand because we know that you are going before us and guiding our path. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you cover our household. We pray that you cover our workplace. We pray that you give us the strength, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to speak to our children, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're thanking you this morning for what you're doing and what you're getting ready to do in our life in this season. We honor you, God, and we give honor and praise to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, this, this, this is the time that we're here to hear from God, to get the revelation that he has placed in the sermon that he'll bring forth to us today. Don't let this word fall on deaf ears. Allow this word to pierce your heart. And if you don't have understanding for what you hear today, I stand here as a woman of God telling you that don't be afraid to ask questions because we are all here to learn from each other. So again, as this word go forth, I pray that you will allow it to change your life. Amen. So let's be on our feet to welcome Pastor Joycelyn Ratigan as the word is being told to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome, clap for yourself. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, we are so far behind time. Welcome. Welcome. Clap for yourself. Don't clap like you're clapping for me. Clap for yourself. We are behind time, so let us clap for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. Clap, my God. Jesus. God is so faithful and I'm thankful, you know. Hallelujah. Bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Tony, turn up my mic a little bit. Thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Faithful God, we worship you this morning. Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. God, we exalt you this morning. We lift your name on high, O oh God, because you are worthy. You are mighty, and there is none like you, Jehovah. Hallelujah. Spirit. Mighty God, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, mighty God. We thank you because you are El Shaddai. We thank you because you are El Elyon. We thank you because you are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Mighty God, as we come before you, in the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus. Lord, we give this service over to you. My God, take Jesus. over and take control. Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Jesus. let your presence rest mm. upon your people. Let your presence 
Jesus. Jesus. God be in the spirit. Be in the spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Welcome the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, Jesus. Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus. My God today. Plant her feet on a firm foundation. Jesus. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mighty God. God. Jesus. Glory to God. Mighty God. Jesus. We pray for her, God. Strengthen Thank her, you, God. Holy Ghost. Keep her eyes. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, God. The walls, mighty God. In the name of Today, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray, mighty God. Mm. Jesus, Jesus, my God, in the name of Jesus, knowing that you are, you are her head, my God, Jesus, she's not relying on her own strength, but she's relying and trusting you, Holy Ghost, my God, Holy Ghost, and fire, breathe upon her, strengthen her, use her God, in the name of Jesus, Mighty God today, we pray, Father, for your people, God, those that are here, mighty God, on the live, those that are here in the service, my God today, if there is anything, we pray divine. In the mighty name of Jesus, people of God, I want you to begin to pray. Open your mouth and pray. Whatever you desire from the Lord, open your mouth and pray this morning. Don't leave the way you came. You know how you came in the room this morning. Don't leave the way you came. My God, Jesus, allow the Lord to take over your life. Come out of your flesh this morning. Come out of the flesh. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Jesus. Jesus. Open them out and pray. People of God, open them out and pray. Don't be a spectator this hour. Open them out and pray. Be a partaker of what God is doing. Be a partaker. Jesus. My God. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mm. 
Hey, hi, 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. My God. Jesus. Jesus. Take over. Take charge. Take over. Take charge. Holy Ghost. Take charge. My God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Mighty God. Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. 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 Open your mouth and talk to God. You know what's on your heart. You know what you desire from Him. You know what you are expecting in the season. Open your mouth and talk to God. Jesus. 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 Yes, over Holy Spirit, overshadow us today. And let your will be done. 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 Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Hey. Jesus. My God. Mm, mm. Jesus. name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You see, we give God honor and praise for what he's doing this morning. People of God, I ask you to pray for discernment so you can see this morning on my way here, the Lord begin to reveal to me how the service will go. And he told me to make a phone call and ask the woman of God to pray. And as I sat there, it's going like the Lord show me. And so we have to be able to discern to see what directions we are entering into. We pray that the Lord will continue to lead us. Many of you, you have warfare and you refuse to pray. You refuse to go to God. But the flesh cannot worship God. So right now I encourage you and I invite you to clap for Jesus. The flesh cannot worship God. Our flesh cannot please God. God don't care about our feelings. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Clap for Jesus. The flesh will never be able to please God. He's a spirit. The Bible tells us that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God wants our truth. He wants our truth. He don't want our feelings. We are standing in his presence. Where there is fullness of joy. 
And if you're here this morning and you're in pain, I want to pray for you. If you're here this morning and it's too much, I want to pray for you. If you're here this morning and you can hardly do what you're supposed to do. Paul said, the things that I'm supposed to do, I can't do it. But the things that I'm doing are the things that I'm not supposed to do. The things that I have to do, I can't do them. So the things that I'm not even supposed to think of, those are the things I'm thinking about. And this morning, I invite you up here if you are carrying burden. You cannot come to church and live the way you came. The Lord want me to pray for you against sickness. Yes. I, I, I don't know you. I don't know your medical condition. It's your first time, right? You were the one that called me? Okay. So the Lord want me to pray for you because I hear the Lord said, people point finger at you and they said you're crazy. Yes. It's true? It's true. Everything is true. The, no, wait. Just wait. Relax. Are you baptized? Yes. You go to church? Um, not right now. I'm on, I stopped, but I, you know, I pray to God. Because I'm so you, by God. But people fight against me. But I'm not letting them stop me because I serve a living God. Yeah, because I see the spirit of madness. And when I asked the Lord, what is it? He said, they accuse you. Yes. The things that you do, they said it's because you're mad. Because I had a fish fry last night and I jumped up at 8 and I know you come at 10 but I wasn't sure if it's ever week you come here and I said to my husband you know I'm going to call her to see if she has church in this side third then I went outside washing the pot and then you call me right away and I dropped the pot and I said you know what I'm going to come to church because I invited another lady somebody clap for Jesus <laughs> want me to pray for you against sickness. Are you on any medication? I'm, I'm, di I'm diabetic. That's all the medication you're yes. taking? Raise your hands. Let me pray for you. I want you to stretch forth your hands so we can pray for this woman. Thank you. What is your full name? Rosemary Cadden Burke. Okay, because I didn't see the Burke. And Okay. Father, we place your daughter before you today. And we come against every accusation from the enemy. Jesus, say God. Jesus is true. Here's the accusation. Jesus is true. Mighty God is true, so true. We come against every accusation. Yes. 
Today, Lord God, I pray against every sickness in her body. Every sickness in her body, I pray against it. Lord, I ask you to give her clarity. Give her clarity. You said we know in part and we prophesy in part. And I ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, to give her clarity in everything around her. In everything that surrounds her finances. In everything that surrounds her marriage. In everything that surrounds her home. I ask you right now, oh God, to give her clarity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let your will be done in this woman's life. Let your will be done, oh God. Bring her closer to you, Lord. Pull her closer to you, Lord. I declare over your life that you will have peace. I declare over your life, touch, touch this water. Touch it. Come in agreement. I declare that this water will bring healing. I di kabado ko soto ko raba ko takashata baba ko tanda la ba ko saya bado do ko soto ko shekete ya bebe bebe be ko ndala ba ya de ko sata bato do do ko shodo bo ko soto ya la ba de ke sete de be baba ya no mighty God ye bebe be ya ko robo ko sata. I hear the Lord say, you need to come out. You need to come out. You need to come out. I hear the Lord said, come out. You need to come out. Release over the water. Release over the water. You need to come out. Ayabadodo do kosoto do bo kosata. Makatara ba kosoto. Robo do kosata da 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 kosata. Manda kasha teke zetea. Matiko robo kosoto. Manda dereke zedebe kosoto. Maladada da kosata. Mali de ke de de ke se te Bada da 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 ko sa ta da ba 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 ka sha ya Re te 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 ya Bo to 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 Ba to do 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 ko so to Me 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 ke se te ya De 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 ka sha da 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 Ba 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 Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Holy Ghost Man da 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 de ya Ba ba da 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 ko robo Ba ba o ko do robo bo ko sha to Man da ya People pray. Bebe 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 ke shake te. Boko to 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 to. Ba da 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 in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to open it. Raise it before God and say, Lord, bless this water so it can bless me. Use this water as an element of healing and deliverance. In Jesus' name. Amen. I hear the Lord say, seven days from now, you will see his hand. Drink the water to the end. Amen. Jesus. 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 You can take your seat. God bless you. Take your heart. What did the Lord say? Use the microphone. What did the Lord say? Sister Rose, you have to believe the report of the Lord. Believe God this morning for your healing. Believe God this morning. Amen. Amen. Come. Come. Yes. 
take off them shoes. Stand right here. The Lord said he set you apart from your family. You didn't, you're not in this ministry because of me. There is something that you need that God will give you to use in your family. The Lord said, don't waver. Release your hands. Raise them up. I want you to open your mouth. And said, Lord, take me as I am. Take me as I am. Lord, take me as I am. Brother Devon, sing the song. Lord, take me as I am. My only plea, Christ died for me. Lord, take me as I am. The Lord said, I should tell you, the battle is not yours. It belongs to him. Leave everything to God. There is nothing that you can do but obey God. And the rest he will do. Don't try to fix anything. Leave, trust God. The Bible said we should trust him with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. But in all our ways we should acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. Jesus. It is well. It is well. I pray for you today. Whatever you need, he will supply. Whatever you desire, according to the book of Psalms, it reminds us, delight ourselves in the Lord, and he shall grant us the desires of our heart. Continue to live your life to please God. Don't worry about naysayers or gainsayers. People will talk regardless. When you were single, they talk. You're married and they're talking. Even when you are dead, they are going to talk. So don't listen to the voice of man. Hear the voice of God. It will be well with you. I declare upon you, and so shall it be in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. You know, when I was... When I got baptized, I learned to raise my hand so much that even when everybody was sitting, my hand was still up. And I did not even know that was a form of submission. Even when pastor preaching, my hands are up. He would say, Joy Celine, put your hands down. I was drunk in the spirit. When you are drunk in the spirit, you don't see nobody in the church. When you are in the spirit... When you are in the spirit, you don't care who is around you. I want you to be in the spirit. Don't worry about who is here. For he did not give us the spirit of fear. He gave us sound mind. He gave us love and power. You see, we don't need to worry about people around us. What we, can, we should worry about is the people that we cannot see. Those are the ones that are dangerous. Don't worry about who you can see. Worry about the ones that are swimming on, uh, swinging on brooms at night. Don't worry about what you see with your naked eyes. Focus. On Jesus Christ. He said what you see. It's yours. So don't worry about what you have eyes to see. What you desire. And you cannot see. That's where you're, 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 you need to place your focus. 
Amen. Somebody clap for Jesus. I, I don't like to be late to preach. No, I don't. I don't like to be late to preach, but it is well. Amen. Amen. People of God, you cannot be late. The weather is good. Let us come out early and finish early so you can go about your business early. When the time is cold, it's different. But when the weather is good, be early. Amen? Amen. Take your seat, please. I want to talk to you about... Where is your prayer shower? You leave it. You need to bring it. Amen? God said he wants you to come out. It means that you are still in. Amen? And this is between you and God. He wants you to come out and float. He don't want you to walk. He wants you to float. Whatever is in you, you will birth it out fully in El Shaddai. Somebody clap for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a reason why you're standing here. You're on assignment. Amen? And, and, and I'm so sorry. It's an assignment that you won't be paid for. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. Amen? It's hard to stand up here and after church you still have to give 10% out of your paycheck. But don't worry about your 10%. Give it to God. You don't give it to pastor. Glory to God. I want you to open your mouth and declare God's promise to his children. God's promise to his children. God don't tell lie. And whatever he promised you and your children, he will do it. Even if they're old, they'll get it. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to tell a little story. And I pray that this blesses every hearer of the word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Out of a one night of fear, it results in pregnancy and it turned a great king's life upside down and the loss of an innocent baby I'm gonna tell a story and it's from the Bible it's not my life because my life I never met no king you know I was not maybe I was blessed enough to meet them and I chased them away with my ignorance because I was ignorant I was ignorant very ignorant and so today we're going to go into the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 11. Just to give you a heads up of the story. 2 Samuel, chapter 11. That's where a part of the story is located, one part of it. And the rest is in 1 Kings. So if you find it, say amen. If you find it. Second Samuel chapter 11. Amen. So I can wait on those who didn't say amen. Hallelujah. Now, Second Samuel chapter 11 verse 27. I'm going to read it. It says, And when the morning was past, David sent to fetch her to his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done, why is everybody quiet? Huh? First, second, second Samuel chapter 11, verse 27, the last verse. The Bible said, but the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. The man sent for another man's woman, and God didn't like it. Earlier, the Bible study was telling us that every man need to have their own wife, and every woman need to have her own. Amen. I want you to preach with me today. We are behind time, so it's okay to preach with me. I want you to declare, Oh God, I pray my ways please you. Oh God, I pray today that my ways please you. 
You see, David was a king, but he did something that didn't please God. It means that no matter how you love your children, they're going to hurt you. Yes, they're going to make you feel bad. We are his children. David was God's son. But David offended God. When somebody displeased you, it offend you. It make you think less of them. The credit that you gave them, now you begin to wonder if you made a mistake. My God. And so, the Bible tells us in, verse, in chapter 12, verse 1, which is the next verse, it says, And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, which Nathan was a prophet. David did something that displeased God. He took a woman. He was a king. And he took another man's wife. And therefore, God in immediately sent his prophet to counsel the king. He said, and he came to him and said, he said unto him, there were two men in one city. One was rich and one was poor. So now the, the, the prophet was speaking in parables. Some people don't understand when God used you to speak to them in parables, they, they need to go and figure it out or pray over it. Don't call back to find out what that meant. Or don't try to size up the person that brought the message. If God allow me to speak to you in parable, run with it and go and pray over it. My flesh cannot prophesy. Prophecy comes from God. And God is a spirit. So it's the spirit that is active. So now the prophet was speaking to David. And he was speaking to the king in parables. And the king didn't understand one bit. And in the end, David was so angry. Because the, the, the prophet referred to the other person as such and such man. Nowadays they talk about such and such man. Anybody understand such and such man? Just raise your hand. You understand such and such man? Do you understand Sister Fabian? Brother Tony, don't you understand such and such? Oh, you didn't, I didn't see your hand. Any, you understand such and such man? And such and such place? Yes. Do you understand woman of God? What does that mean? Such and such. Okay, thank you. So, such man, according to the... You see, this word is old. The Bible is the oldest book. And it's in the Bible. So he said, such man. <laughs> such and such man did something that displeased God. And when he said it, he said, he had nothing save one little hue lamb. And such man have a lot. So such and such man begin to listen good. Why is this man talking to him like that? Such man get upset. We are, we are in the Bible. Let us stay in the Bible. So the word of God continue. And such man said, that man need to die. And the prophet said, you are that man. And David said, I have sinned. Such man now found out if the prophet came directly to him, maybe he would slew him. So he have to come to him sideways for him to figure it out. He was a king. He had access to many and many, many virgins. But he took one man with a little, that little she-goat. That's what the word you here mean. That little she-goat. That man had one little she-goat. And you have a whole herd. And you took it. Such man said, that man need to die. That man need to be beaten. So, the prophet said, you are such man. Sometimes we don't want to hear the truth. Lord Jesus. Some people will never be satisfied. No matter how much they have. And they stay with your little you. And they will take it from you. 
Have you ever seen some people, they really don't need anything, and they were invited somewhere, and they live with a big shopping bag of stuff, and they don't need it. They don't need it, but they are taking it. Have you ever met any of those people? They go to maybe weddings or an event. They know they don't have any place to put it. Their storage full, but they're still taking. It's true. Such man and such woman. Greedy. Greed. Yes, greed. It's a, it's, it was out of greed. So, you no know, matter how much some people have, they'll take yours. It doesn't matter how much they accomplish. They don't see their own accomplishment. Some people are gifted. Gifted. But you that only speak in tongues and don't even have the gift to understand it yet, they envy you. Am I lying? Some, oh Jesus. You who don't even know how to tie your shoes lace properly, so you get shoes without lace. And they are jealous of you. Such man. Somebody declare, such man. Such man. Such man. Such man. My God. So we are in 2 Samuel chapter 12. Now we're going to go down to let me read verse 4 because such man need to be exposed. Verse 4 says, And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he speared and took of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was to come to him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was to come to him. Verse 5 said, And David was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that had done this shall surely die. Remember, this was the king laying out the law against such man. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold. Anybody remember? This reminds me of Mordecai. And hey man, he says, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said, thou art that man. Lord Jesus. You see why we have to search ourselves? David said, search me according to my righteousness now you see why david had such zeal for the lord because every time david sinned it was exposed he said you are that man thus said the lord god of israel i anointed thee king over israel and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. So God began to remind him that, look, I saved you from that father-in-law of yours. And I gave thy masters, I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom. And gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And that it had been too little, I would moreover have given thee such and such so such man was about to get such and such things you see god said if it wasn't enough i could have given you more but the one little lamb jesus christ we need to cut out envy and jealousy we need to cut it out Many of us are in good position in life, but we are jealous of small things that is not even meaningful to us. We need to cut out envy and jealousy. Greed. My God. No. The word of God tells us that because of such things, because of such things, let's look at verse 13. Verse 13 said, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord have put away thy sin. 
thou shalt not die. You see, God, you know, they used to say, if God was like man, many of us would have died because of our heart. David repent immediately. He said, I have sinned against the Lord. So you see, being with somebody else's partner, it's a sin. It's a sin in the sight of God and in the sight of man. And when I gave my life to the Lord, I wrote letters to some people who don't even speak to me anymore. And I repent because one of my favorite thing was married men because that's easy to deal with up and out. It's a sin. I didn't know. No one told me. I wasn't saved. And I thank God I wasn't saved because I used to say any time I give my life to the Lord, I'm not turning back because I sin every sin out of the Bible. The only sin I didn't commit was murder. I committed many sins. And if you don't, if you cannot talk about the past, it means that you didn't get over it. If you cannot talk about the, the foolishness, Amen. the evil that you used to do, it means that you are still doing it. Amen. If you cannot... <laughs> Mighty God. So David repent. David shut it down. And in verse 13, we, we know, now we get to see that he was ashamed. The prophet was just a man of God. But the king, you see, it doesn't matter your position in life. Or how much money you have. When you sin, you sin. <laughs> it doesn't, no, this is serious. It doesn't matter how powerful you are. When you sin, you sin. Amen. There is no other way to redeem yourself unless you repent. My God. Some people say, oh, pastor can't talk to me because pastor sin. I used to sin. I, I'm done with that. You know why I'm done with that? I'm not perfect. I'll cuss you out in my mind, in my heart. But I'm not going to say it to you. You know why? Because I still have to repent. Yes, because it, it was done in the heart. You got to be real. You know how many people I curse them out when I'm driving? Look at him. Idiot. Fool. Who we'll give that the one a license? Yes. Everybody that is driving know about road rage. You're, 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 it's normal. Nikki, I see you. And I see people laughing at brother Devon. Watch him. Watch him. Can't even drive. I see people laughing at Sister Petronia. Look at her. She better mind she hit my vehicle. We all make that mistake on the road. We all bad drive people. We all run the red light. And then we get angry. We have the audacity to get angry and we're wrong. Yeah. Sister Lorraine, I see you making problems on the road and you don't start driving yet. <laughs> it's true. It's coming. That's how you learn. Yes. Don't worry. Jesus used to call people hypocrites. Why? Because they piss him off. Every, every, every one of us have a way to express ourselves when we are angry. Some of us get physical because we, we, we have broad shoulder. You know? Brother Devon will say, you see your back away broad? <laughs> yes! We, exactly. Or we take it outside. Many people, no, many people you see fighting. Sometimes it's from road rage. They pull over and they draw the machete. I don't know if anybody remember there was a there was a, 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 a thing on, on social media going around. The guy bad drives someone else. And the man run for something in his car. And when he was walking up to the guy, the guy pulled out a gun. He started to act like he was a handicap. Yeah, because he's a big gun. I'm telling you, it's because of road rage. Remember, he have like a piece of crowbar to hit the man. And the guy had a big gun. 
right next to him. And when he turned, he, he just dropped one limb and begin to dip. Yeah, he begin to dip. I'm here to let you know, people of God, this is reality. We have to be careful how we approach people. You don't know when they are armed and dangerous. Somebody see you and you look simple. They don't know your rank in the spirit. They don't know you about you in the spirit. You might see me look like this, but you don't know my rank. I went out my mouth to pray. Two days ago, I went to visit my grandson and my son in Florida. My grandson is not doing good. And uh, they came to the hotel to pick me up, to take me to the airport. And um, I prayed. And I had them. I've never done this before the Lord. You know, I had them who held hand and we pray. And I anointed them from head to toe. My grandson, Grandma, even my feet. I said, the bottom of your feet. And in 10 minutes, in 10 minutes, they were both sleeping. They came to pick me up, to take me to the airport. And in 10 minutes, these two people, <laughs> like a light. And I'm laughing. I'm laughing. I said, look at them. They came to get me. Phone ring. Nobody don't hear it. All kinds of stuff started happening. I, I want you to understand the power of Almighty God. You hear me? God don't play. God's serious about us. He is serious about his business. So when we are sitting down pretending as if we don't know God of people that have certain rank, you might not hear them talking and bragging. That does not mean that they are not tall in the spirit. People of God, listen. We need to stop judging other people. Because when we do, we lose too much. We lose too much. I, I wanted you to see, so, I wanted to show something. I can't find it. I want to show you something. We need to stop judging people th because of the way they look. Don't use the looks of a person and think that is their height. The person's true height is what they do in the spirit. Amen. When you were in sin, many of us were very tall because that's how the devil have us. When we came to Christ, the, we, we allow people to reduce us. We should be taller. When we come to Christ, we should be taller. Because now we have the word of God inside of us. And greater is he that is in us than them. So when we come out of the world, we need to know our statue. We need to know our statue. We, 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 we are not physically tall anymore. We are not physically fat anymore. Because it's very hard to lift up. You notice when somebody dies out there heavy? You cannot carry certain weight. Unless you're spiritually strong. Somebody said when they, they are carrying the casket and the person get heavier. Six men and it's still heavy. And they begin to curse that dead body. And then they, anybody hear the story, they pick it up and then the casket get light. The devil is a liar. So I came today to let you know this. Don't underestimate the power of Almighty God. Don't underestimate the power you carry. Don't underestimate what you carry for the Lord. I want you to understand who you are in Christ. David sinned and he repented. But it didn't stop there. Because he had to now go and clean up Miss Lady. So he got the man killed. He got the woman pregnant. And he tried to send the man home to his wife because he was the king so the man worked for him the guy was a soldier somehow the man maybe he was discerning or something when david tell him to go home to his to wash his feet i, I don't want to imagine these things because if you're going to wash your feet go home mean you're dirty go home to your wife the guy stood by the gate and that's where he slept 
He didn't go home. So David was a really nasty king. He was a deceiver. The man didn't go home. He knew something wrong. That has never happened before. So he don't want to see his wife. Maybe David did it to somebody else's wife. They know about his behavior. And therefore, when David found out that the man didn't go home, he got him killed. Yes, we are in the Bible. David wrote a letter to Joab. And the guy brought the letter and said, put him up front. So sometimes some people put you on the front line at work is to destroy you. <laughs> when many times they put you on front line if you really want to kill a person give them something that they don't have no knowledge of they put him on the front line and he died in the battle he was not a strong soldier you know strong soldiers king respect them right the king had no respect for Uriah he was just a regular guy with a fine looking wife. But God had a plan. God, somebody declared God had a plan. And the word of God makes it clear. The woman had a baby. And the baby died. Because it was out of wedlock. It was out of sin. And even so. I'm going to read something that I that the Lord dropped in my spirit. He said, David knew the baby was his, but he would rather deny the baby to cover up his sin. He wanted Uriah to take the baby to father the child. Wait, not just that. So I guess Uriah and the wife never had any children. They, 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 mm, we don't know how long they were married. So he's always gone to war. That time David had no business being at home. Because he was a king. King goes to war. David went on top of his roof. So I presume he had a binocular looking because Bathsheba was taking a shower. I don't, she wasn't taking a bath. She was taking a shower. If she was laying down, David would never stay on the roof and see her. She was taking a shower and David see the woman and send for the woman. Because he's a king, he's the Dan. They had to obey. Mighty God. And so, the story continues. God allowed the baby to die. God told David, that child will never live. And the baby died. David fasted and prayed when baby was almost dying. But once the baby died, David got up. He washed himself and he had food. When he was there fasting, laying down, and his, the Bible said the elders came to get him to eat, he said, no, go. Sometimes we need to repent. We need time to get ourselves in order. David needed time alone with God. And so, God fixed the situation. He said, oh, so you want this woman? And the woman's husband is alive. And you kill the man. So now you have to take this woman. So now he has to marry a widow. And that's how Solomon came. The second child was Solomon. And after that she had four more for him. Because she, she ended up having five children. So I'm here to let you know people of God. While David was comforting the woman. Because her baby died. Her husband died. The whole mix-up, what you call it, hormones kicking all over the place, and then she's grieving. And while David was there comforting this woman, he got her pregnant again. So, wait, the man was not able to get her pregnant. And that man knew something was off. And when two become one, and one cheat. When two people become one. Right, Brother Devon? And one cheat. You can tell. Such and such things expose such things. 
the feeling, the energy, the conversation. Such things took place. It's true. And so, out of sin, David and Bathsheba became close. And they were the two closest of the whole women that he been with. Bathsheba was the boss. She was the queen for Solomon, not for David. And now, Solomon came, God spoke, everything is supposed to be on one accord. And this is the part where I want you to pay attention. Solomon's name, real name was Jedidiah. And Jedidiah mean beloved of Jehovah. That was his real, I guess that was his, not just that, the tribe that they came from, you know, they give name according to the Bible or to the family. So Jedidiah, which means beloved of God, you know David was chosen, he's from the tribes. And people of God, I'm here to let you know, David got old. When he got old, they found a virgin for him. As pretty as Bathsheba was, she could not. No, you see, Bathsheba only came out of lust and sin. So they sent for a Shunammite woman. The word Shunammite means honor. She was tall in the spirit. If you remember the Shunammite that Elisha blessed and she got pregnant and had a son and the baby died and came back to life. She had money because she was able to build an apartment upstairs for the prophet. So if you look up Shunammite, it tells you their status. So they found a beautiful virgin. So she never only pretty, she have things. And she was spiritual. Because she had to minister to David. And that was her only assignment. Sometimes I'm here to let you know people of God. You only have one assignment. One. God only want one assignment with you. To see if you're going to be obedient. Jonah had one assignment. And he failed God. He failed God in such a way that he ended up in a fish belly. Many times we see some people struggling. We can't help them. Because they fail God. And they have to redeem themselves by repent. Some people would have been further in life. But because of their disobedience they are still going through hardship. Yeah. And it bothers me when I see some people, they got baptized from Wapi Kill Philip and they are still envying and jealous, being jealous of people in church and they are not growing. They are short. They don't read the word of God. They know every pastor business. They know every pastor secret, but they don't know the word of God. So they are short. My God. I want you to understand my people. They sent for a woman to cherish. So she was never going to sleep with poor old David. Just to... No, not comfort. Cherish. The word of God said cherish him. You know what? Cherish. When you cherish something, you don't want nothing to touch it. When you comfort, you can't comfort anybody. But when you cherish, when you really cherish, oh Jesus, they call it your eyeball. Some people have five kids. And there is, anybody remember um, Joseph? Jacob cherish him. When, jo when, jo when Jacob found out Joseph was alive, he came back to life. And so you see, there's a promise now on Solomon because David wanted to do something for the Lord and the Lord said no your son Solomon will do it and he will be my son so God claimed Solomon he said he will be my son and I will be his father no what does that mean it means that there's a big high calling upon Solomon 
David was a king. God only say one thing about David. He's a man of my heart. But Solomon will be God's son. Jesus. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Say you love me. Anybody know the song? Is it true that you are thinking of me? Do you know the song? You, you need to learn the American songs. It says, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. It says, is it true that you God love Solomon? And he said, I am his father, and he will be my son. So right then and there, David knew that Solomon was safe. When he died, he wouldn't have to worry about Solomon. Solomon was not the only one. He had four more kids with the woman, but Solomon was the chosen one. And I want people of God, I want you to understand that there was one called Adonijah. Adonijah was from a different woman. And he began to exalt himself in 1 Kings chapter 1. Adonijah began to exalt. So I want you to go, huh? Yes, so I want you to turn your Bible over to 1 Kings chapter 1 and see the judgment that began to reach David in his old age. When David was young and killing many, many, many people, his children never challenged him because David was a bad boy. David said, the way he, I think the way he get Abigail, he said, if Abigail husband as much as P right here, I'm going to kill him. And that was what Abigail, what? David was a thugs. So, you know, back in those days, I guess you couldn't pee anywhere. You know, some men, they just turn and pee somewhere. That didn't happen when David was king. Because David will get you killed. And therefore, Adonijah exalt himself because now David is getting old. He want to be king because he's older than Solomon anyways. Solomon was young. He was a little jitterbug. And so, Nathan again surfaced. The prophet Nathan began to counsel Bathsheba. Say, come. You need to listen to me. The Bible never say he prophesied. He counseled Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, to go to David because something needs to happen. And David is old and it needs to take place. And whatever God said about your children, it have to come to pass. And therefore, David never utter any word out of his mouth. But Adonijah take over kingship. And it was supposed to be for Solomon. Many times we don't want to pray for our children. Because we see other people, children in the position. And God said it's for your child. It doesn't matter who is sitting where. Whatever belongs to your children. It will be theirs. You have to work. You have to put in the work. And therefore the prophet talked to the baby mother. And said come. Let me tell you what to do. Your boy will sit on the throne. But there are some things you have to do. Bathsheba said. Oh am I going to talk to David. When. My stepson. Is already. In the seat. David could not sit on the throne. He was too old. And if you read the Bible carefully. Tell you about the crown. That David wore on his head. It belonged to the Ammonites. As soon as David robbed the crown from the king. He put it on his head. You see Jesus have mercy. I pray that God bless every one of you in here. Many of you. Your crown is already sitting on somebody's head. Huh. Why? Because you won't pray and your parents never pray. Yeah. The word of God continues. It said, Nathan, in verse 11, first king, let's look at verse 5. 
He said, and Adonijah began to exalt himself. His mother name was Hegit. Adonijah, the son of Hegit, exalt himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him, he prepared him chariots and horsemen and 50 men to run before him. What did Elijah say? I'll kill you and your 50 with prayer. So sometimes it takes prayer to mash up some business, to destroy some people acting as if they want to take your position. Don't argue. Just destroy them in the spirit. You don't have to open them out and defend your children. Go into prayer. So the boy began to exalt himself and have people. Remember, David was already king. David was already king. David was king and so money was in the house. Adonijah having 50 men running in front of him was nothing. He, they had access to money. But it was not about money anymore. It was about the throne. So I, I'm here this morning to whisper this little nugget in your ears. It doesn't matter who is sitting where. Your position can never be taken. They cannot take what's yours. Mighty God. The word of God tells us that when, when the woman went in, she saw David getting the attention that he was supposed to get. He, were being, he was being ministered to. The Bible never said none of these women ministered to David before. Upon all these pretty women that David had in his, at his feet. Nowadays they said women at your feet. Right brother Devon? At your feet. None of these women ever ministered to King David. So when the woman came and was ministering to David. Baby mother walking. So David could make a promise. People of God, you have to fight for your children. Fix your dress. You have to fight for your children. You have to fight for the rights of your children. The word of God said. Nathan said, go ahead and while you are talking to the king, then I will walk in behind you. So it was a plan. And it worked. He could not go in with her like he was about to show favor because the king listened to the prophet. So when the woman was talking to David, then the prophet walked in and put the icing on the cake. And, the, and, and, and David agreed. He said, yes. Solomon will sit on the throne. Solomon couldn't just enter the throne to sit. It took warfare for him to get it. Some of you know that your children are being blessed and you refuse to pray because you remember the prophecy. You have to pray. You have to. You know, I want you to understand. David agreed. The woman was fighting for her son and for herself. Because with Solomon being king, Bathsheba have a nice place to stay. So she was not only fighting. Sometimes when you fight for your children, you're also fighting for yourself for old age. Not no. It seems like it's nothing now because you're young and up and running. But when you're getting up in age and that child that you fight for in prayer, that you labor for, that child will set you up and make you comfortable in old age. I want somebody to know Fight for your children. Things might look dim right now. They might not be in the place that they are supposed to be. Not even with the mindset. But I want you to understand. Fight for your children. Fight for them. The woman begin to fight for her son. Remember. David was just getting old and being catered to by different people. They, he didn't need any more women in his life. But he had something to do. Somebody said, until you bless me. He had something to do. And even though David had the power to do it, and Adonijah over there doing something, sometimes we see people doing things. Don't let that phase you. Don't let what people are doing 
my, my mom would say, don't let it strike your eyes because they're just wasting time. Adonijah was wasting time and money. Let us look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37. After he finished exalting himself, mighty God, Matthew chapter thirty-seven. It says, "Let your yes be a yes, and let your no be a no. Anything else is evil." So when they brought this, reminded David now about the oath, because they make David made an oath. He was being reminded of his oath, and the prophet was he was he was a faithful man of God. He was faithful to the end. The word of God said, Get, go and get thee unto King David and say unto him, This not thou, my Lord, O king, swear unto thy handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, my son, thy son shall, shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then doth Adonijah reign? People of God, don't concern yourself with what anyone else is doing. Amen. Don't concern, don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Focus in prayer on what belongs to you. The word of God said, let your yes be a yes. So many times, many of us, we agree on something and we change our mind. It's evil. It's evil for you to say you're going to do something and you don't do it. And it's evil for you to say you're not going to do something and then you turn around and do it. It's evil. The word of God said anything else is evil. So please, let your word be your bond. David was held accountable for what he said, for the oath that he was under. My God. And that was verse 5. It was reminded. But if we look at 2 Chronicles chapter 28, it reminds us that God told Solomon, God told David that Solomon would sit on his throne. And that's when God called him his son. Many times God give us promises and tell us things about our children. But we have to do some work for it to manifest. Yes. Sometimes it's even going back to school. Because when you go to school, your children will see that whatever you're doing, that's where you're going to meet the person that you're supposed to meet for your child to get that breakthrough. Amen. Sometimes it's a divine connection for a breakthrough to come. But you have to put in some kind of legwork. Something that will make sense. Oh, Jesus. Yes. We need to do warfare to manifest some things. This morning when we came in, we had to get on our knees. The Lord said we have to be. People have got to encourage you. If you're coming to church, come early. Don't march in when it's almost done. If you're going to come, come for something. Don't just come. Just don't show up. If you're coming to El Shaddai service, come early. And reap the benefit that it comes with. No two Sundays are ever the same. God do something different every week. Because if I don't feel the presence of God, I can't preach. The word cannot come for it. I have to feel the presence of God. He has to be here with me. So you can get what he placed in me. And therefore, the word of God tells us that God keep, is a promise keeper. He keeps his promise. We need to, Bathsheba had to step up to the tape or to the plate and speak up for her son. 
I want to know, to know this. The word of God said, open your mouth wide and God will fill it with good things. I want you to be on your feet. Be on your feet. We are way past the time. We're going to pray. Now we know. If Bathsheba had not gone to David in his old age, Solomon would never get that position that God had for him. So you see, sometimes God has something for you, and it's like a diamond in the rough, and if you don't take it and wash it off, it will, you will never think you're being, you're, you're, you were being blessed because all you see is a dirty rock even though it's a diamond. So I want you to open your mouth at this hour. We cannot be here so late and not pray. Oh God, anything that belongs to me and my children, I take it right now. I take it by force. I take it by force. I take it by force. Anything that belongs to me and my children right now, I take it by force. The word of God said from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffer violence, but the violent shall take it by force. Anything that belongs to me and my children, I take it by force. Any place that I have to sit, any place that I have to sit, I will sit there in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare it. Open your mouth and pray. Anything belonging to you, it will never be given to anyone else. It will never be given to anyone else. Anything that belongs to you, it will never be given to anyone else. They will never take what's yours. They will never take what belongs to you. Any place that you have to be, you will see those doors in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Can I pray for you? Come. Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to wash your hands. Wash your hands. I want you to pray while I'm washing my hands and you're going to drink the rest of the water that I pray. As I lift it up before God, I use it as an element for breakthrough. I use it as an element for breakthrough. You will run and not get weary. You will soar like an eagle. You will shoot up for the stars. I hear the Lord said, you will never be held back in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will never be stopped. You will never be stopped. You will never be held back in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over you right now, as you use this water, the Lord will show up in your life. You're not too young to be blessed. I bless you today. I bless you today. I bless you today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Raise your hand. Wash them. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your face. Come, come. Wash your face. Wash your face. Wash your face. Wash your face. They will never stop you. Wash your face. Anything you came to this country for. You will get it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus, my God. God bless you. Take your seat. Hey, Jesus, my God. You will be great and you will do great things. Mighty God. Oh, Jesus, uh, I declare over your life, uh, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I pray, I feel the presence of God. I pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that your spirit man will wake up as of today. I wake up your spirit man. Mighty God. Jesus. Glory to God. My God. Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus one more time. 
when we see young people with great destiny, we have to bless them. B bring your daughter here. There's something. And, and make, get a water from back and bring it to me. Is she active in school? Active in anything other than... Okay. Bring the water, my dear. No, put that water down and take up a different one. Yes, come. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody clap for Jesus. Stop right there. Open it. You drink a lot of water at home? Don't drink it. You drink a lot of water at home? Okay, let me pray with you. Hold it. Hold it. I said, Lord, help me to be strong, to, be, to walk with you. Put your words in my mouth. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, Please look at me. Don't look at her. She knows it's okay. All right? I know she's looking for your approval. Lord, please help me. Please teach me. Lord, please put your words in my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. Drink this water. All of it. Take your time and finish it. Finish it. Heal my cup, Lord. I let bring she and come. Bring she and come. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven. said pray for Shane I cover this boy as he enters school he will not come home with the wrong spirit he will not pick up any negative spirit they will never slow him down they will never stop him in school no one will try to lay hands on him in school and dominate him I cover him right now in the blood of Jesus Christ. From the crown of his head to the soul. I want you to pray for this boy. He will never pick up the wrong spirit in school. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cover him right now from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. I cover you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Take over. Somebody clap for Jesus. Let's be on our feet so we could say a word of prayer for the woman of God. 
just stretch forth your hands. You guys heard the words, and you know that this was a word that was given to her from God. So we're praying as God continues to fill her up that we hear as the sheep of the flock that we will hear the word and the words will not go on deaf ears. We're praying that God continue to use her and bless her and guide her in all spirit and in all truth, that she will never waver in what God has told her to say, that she will never look at anyone to be more than herself to not even do what God is saying to do. We need to know that God has no favorite. And God use who he choose to use. And we need to know that his word says we should respect who he put in authority. And who is the head of the church. He is the first head of the church. But Joycelyn Ratigan is the head of this church. So we pray that God will use her mightily to spread his good news and to impart in us that we also are God children, that we need to go forth and spread the good news as well. So when we come to church on Sunday and we hear the message that the preacher has preached to us that we could take it outside and use it to encourage somebody else amen but we need to know as well as God is using her to bring forth word we need to feed our spirit with the word of God so that we can walk with his presence in spirit and in truth to deliver his word with love amen so we just want to thank God for what he's doing in her life. I just want to bless her life this morning because she has came from so far. But to stand here this morning or today and to do the will of God, it was not easy. But God, I pray that you will continue to bless her, God. I pray that you will continue to bless her children, God. I pray that you will continue to bless her grandchildren, God. Father God, I pray that even when she is weak, you will make her strong. I pray that even when the, the the devil come upon her to not do according to your will you will lift up a standard and let her know that she is more than a conqueror through jesus christ father in the name of jesus i place your woman servant in your hand and i ask you to let your will be done in her life in jesus name i pray amen 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 right now we're going to, uh, you guys could sit. Thank you very much. Glory be to God. So again, thank you guys for coming out to El Shaddai prior to our Father. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Whew. Thank you. Thank you for coming to worship with us. I greet everyone online. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. Is there anybody here that today is your first day? Can you please stand so we could get your name? First or second time visitor, Ooh, please stand so we could get your name and welcome you. In the name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. I give honor to God and praise. Um, I was watching her a long time, but one Saturday night, I think, I don't go on Facebook no more, too much. So I was watching her, and I heard she said, she needs East River Drive. I said, East River Drive. And I said, I was laying with my husband. I got to come here. But last Sunday, I was cooking for a birthday. I couldn't make, and then I had a fish fry yesterday, and I said, Lord, but I remember she said, if I only diabetes, but it's not just diabetes. I do, came here, the, I do a shot for eczema. And I said, this woman is a real woman of God because she don't know nothing about my sickness. And, you know, I bless God because I'm praying to find 
I used to go to a church, but when I walk into church, I can feel the spirit and feel the church. Amen. Real. Amen. Amen. I can feel the spirit. Amen. Amen. And I amen. go where God put me. And I Hallelujah. come and God put me right here. And I'm just sitting down. I didn't see her sitting down there. But when she turned around and said, God, that's the woman of God. But Hallelujah. you don't know who God is going to use. Amen. You may see me, my outside, but you don't know my inside. Amen. Amen. And you know, and I bless God. And every, any Sunday that I can come, because I work at New Britain Hospital, and I work at a job. And when she said accusation, I said, oh, my God. They accused me that I, I, um, I hit a patient, and I'm out of that job. But you know what? I leave it to God, because Amen. it's only God. Only God. Only God. And I say, God, when I, I'm going to see a lawyer, I say, God, when, that, when I go back to that job, I'm going to put in my two weeks and leave. Because I depend on God. Be I depend on God. Whatever she said in here is so true. It's a fight. You know, people just fight me for nothing at all. I will give you. You come to my house. I give. I give. I give. No matter what I have, I give. Because God bless me. I could give you. Dollar today that I have because what God is going to bless me somewhere. You don't have Amen. to be money. Amen. You know, it can be you don't have to be a money. Yes. So people look at me, she said, like I said, I'm crazy. Yes. I'm not crazy for them. Amen. I'm crazy for God. I'm not crazy for them. understand me. Only God understand me. Sometimes even my husband said I'm crazy. But because the things that I tell him, the things that God show me and I tell him but he would say, oh, no. Then he come back and said, true. Because I depend on God. I don't depend, God. I don't depend on people. So if you come here and I, you say something, I go to God with it. I go to God. I seven days. I'm going to God and I say, God, bless me. Whatever, whatever it is, I don't know what it is. But it's something that I have. That's why I'm here today. Amen. That's Amen. why I'm here. I didn't Amen. have to come. I did not have to come in here. But God put me to come. I drive, find my way. I don't really know this side too good. But God laid me right here and I park right at Amen. The Amen. So this is God. And I will come any, any Sunday. I will come if I'm not working. I would be here. Amen. And I would invite people. Amen. Because I draw people. Amen. People. I tell the word and I draw. You will see people that follow behind me. Because once it's God, I'm going to bring you here to hear the word of God. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for visiting. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone else want to share a testimony today? Hallelujah. I just want to give God thanks this morning and for being here. You know, last night I was at home and I was worshiping. And the spirit of the Lord said to me, there's something that I have to do in church today. He did not reveal it to me. But, you know, in myself, I was like, what do I have to do at church tomorrow? And I walked in and, you know, everything was smooth sailing and we were worshiping. I would do our thing until Rev, the spirit used Rev to do what we had to do to bless the water for Sister Rose. So, you know, I want to give God thanks for a life this morning because let me tell you, God, God is good. God is indeed amazing. So continue to pray for me while I will continue to do the will of God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Anybody else would like to share a testimony? That's it? Okay. <laughs> well, announcement time. Just um, be encouraged and remember that we're going to Grenada September 20th to the 22nd. And we're also going to Jamaica November 9th to the 13th. So be encouraged. If your situation look like you can't make it right now, remember, all you have to do is put it in God's hand and let him direct your path. He will even send someone to pay for that ticket. You just have to believe that though. If you believe it, you will receive it. And if your heart is in the right place, God will make provision at all time for 
anything that's concerning him. Amen? So anyone that is online, whether you're, you're in, J uh, not Jamaica, but wherever you are in the world, I don't even care if you're in Jamaica. If God has to make a shift, move, whatever it is, he'll do it if that's where he needs you to be. Amen? Paul used to tell the, the, the Thessalonians, the Corinthians, I want to come see you. I long to see you so I can lay hands on you. So that you can encourage me and I encourage you. So I pray as we go to Grenada and we go to Jamaica, I will be encouraged and they also will be encouraged. They'll be encouraged from the word that is coming forth. They'll be encouraged from us that is going and we will be encouraged because they will be fellowshipping with us. Amen. Because the Bible says iron sharpen iron. We can't think we know everything because we don't. And as long as we say we're serving God, God is shaping us and molding us every single day. So be encouraged. Amen? Amen. Well, you know, sometimes I forget to talk about the T-shirt, the anointing oil, the prior shawl. I just want you guys to know the same information that we use for our tithes and offering, cash app, PayPal, or Zelle. The telephone number is 860-634-8557. So again, if you guys would like to buy anointing oil, prior shawl, or t-shirt, don't forget, we have it here on sale. And you could reach... Pastor Joyce Lynn at 860-634-8557 to purchase your oil, your prior shawl, or your t-shirt. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Anybody celebrating a birthday this month? Anybody celebrating a birthday? Well, if anybody online selling a birthday, I pray that God will bless you, keep you, and enlarge your territory. Amen? Well, we could be on our feet because we're getting ready to close, but I pray that your Monday will be blessed. I pray that your Tuesday will be blessed. I pray that your Wednesday be blessed. I pray that your Thursday be blessed. I pray that your Friday be blessed. I pray that your Saturday be blessed. And I pray when you come back on Sunday, you will have a testimony to share in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Next, next week. Week Sunday, Sister Nikki is gonna rehearse that. <laughs> she was over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. I'm just so thankful for every one of you here. I wanna play this. I think it's one minute. It's less. It's forty second video. It touches my heart. Sometimes, you know, we pray for other people's children and we forget to pray for our children. And sometimes we only want to pray for our children and forget to pray for other people's children. But I, I found a video. I want to play it so you can hear what I experienced. I think it was uh, Friday, Friday, yeah, Friday afternoon while I was in Miami. sleep. Right after I finish praying for him, knock out. Sleep. May the Lord bless him. They came to pick me up to take me to the airport and the Lord used me to pray for both him and his son. My grandson went into the bed and covered up under the sheet after I finished do the anointing oil and the prayer and my son lay down on the sofa flat out sleep. But that type of breathing is not normal so i'm kind of glad that i caught it you know so when you pray remember them amen, amen. i i was listening the man just laid here 
And he sleeps like me because he have his hand between his legs and that's how I sleep most of the time. And he was sleeping, snoring, deep, deep, deep sleep. I've never seen that before. I know the one that's in Jamaica, if he sit here, he just knock out. But I did not know the one here is the same because he's always going around. So when you pray, remember my children in prayer. I don't think I pray for them as much as I should because I'm busy praying for other people's children. And God knows that when I work for him, he will work for, for my children, you know? So we just want to thank God that he is able to do exceedingly, say it, abundantly all we ever ask. It's Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Yes, above all we ever ask and even think. And I pray that Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 will manifest in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You see, the word of God came to me while I was talking to Sister Anna about my trip. I was telling her something that happened. And all of a sudden, I started to talk to her about Solomon. And I was telling her about my children. And I remember the Lord used me to tell her that Solomon could never be king Unless his mother went to his fa father for the position. So somehow I was telling her about this thing that took place on the phone. Because it bothered me. And the Lord said, don't say anything. I'm like, what is this? Courtney fell asleep right away. And my grandson fell asleep. And he did not know that his son was asleep. His head covered under the sheet and everything. I'm like, the Lord said, don't say anything. It never happened before. But it was just me and them. And I thank God I didn't bring Brother Devon with me. Or I didn't invite my daughter with me. Or I knew a lot of people in Florida and I didn't call anyone. I didn't want to be around anyone. Some things you can't do with I was not distracted. And so God did something. Amen. This was long coming. And I thank God for the opportunity to do it. Even with our children, it's a privilege. Did you know that? They don't belong to you. They belong to Jesus Christ. So that woman had to go to the man and talk. And, 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 and what you call it? Petition for her son. Or else he would not be king. So as much as you heard that your daughter will be in certain position, you have to speak up. Don't think because of her looks that alone won't work. The Bible said David was handsome. But the woman was so pretty that David had to commit sin. It means that Bathsheba was better looking than David. So just imagine Solomon looks. Just imagine Solomon looks when they describe David to King Saul. He was handsome. And when David sent for Bathsheba, it's because of how she looked. So just imagine the baby that they made. And the position that he was going to miss by an inch. So don't lose because of their looks. Don't, don't think because the children look good, they'll make it. You have to pray. Looks don't work. I only describe the same people in the Bible to let you know that as good looking as you are, you can miss your blessing. Your children can miss their blessing. Don't rely on your looks. Pray. Because I think my son is handsome. And his son. I think. You know, it's kind of sorta. But it's not working. We have to deal with things in the spirit realms. Jesus said, what we bind on earth is bound up already in heaven. So all we have to do is bind it. And whatever we lose on earth, it's already done in heaven. So today we lose everything that concerns our children. Everything that concerns your marriage. Everything that concerns your finances. I lose it today. Everything that concerns your education. Everything that concerns your home. 
everything that concerns your health and your well-being. I lose it right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us thank God for today. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the people that are visiting with us. We thank you for Sister Rose. As long as she had my number, she called today. So I guess she had my number for such a time as this. And Lord, I thank you for her life and, her, and the life of her family. And Lord, I pray for each and every one that is watching from afar. Many have desired to come and they don't know how. I pray, Lord God, that you open doors for people to visit this ministry in the name of Jesus. Some only watch and they don't have the desire to come because they can view online. But Lord, I pray you touch their heart so they can come and test, taste and see that you are good. They can come and test the spirit. And we decree and we declare that as we leave this room this hour, my God, your spirit will go before us and sort us out for the rest of the week in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Anyone looking for a job, Lord, we are asking you for open doors, for open doors for people to enter into their ministry, their new career. Mighty God, I ask you to open doors for the single women and men of this ministry. Oh God, we are asking you to propel them to your highest level. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that they will never be taken for granted. My God, anyone in this ministry that have been taken for granted as of today, I pray it come to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that your people will be appreciated and, and acknowledged wherever they go. In the room that they enter into, I declare that they will have a divine visitation from you and receive favor in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree and we declare it done as we agree with our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I just remember something. Our birthday club.